Speaking of the best episode of Lower Decks, episode 10, No Small Parts, let's get into this finale. Let's dig into this sucker. Let's look under the covers. Let's see what's in there. The season finale was completely loaded with familiar, the next generation things. It started off amazing with the Cerritos crew, well, the officers, and then Mariner and Boiler. (laughs) down on beta three and talking about Landrew, the computer mm-hmm. that was telling people to like murder people during red hour. This is an original series callback essentially. And it's good. Apparently all the work that Kirk and Spock did during the first contact in the enterprise on the original show didn't stick. Yeah. Kirk came down, ripped his shirt, seduced some, Alien Beta 3 babe, <laughs> and then transported out, and they were back on Landrew. And Landrew's like, oh, they're gone. Yep. Time to get back to killing. That's right. Let's guess what time it is. The red hour. <laughs> that was great. That <laughs> was good. The Pecklins were a familiar thing as well. They're from a TNG episode from season two called Samaritan Snare. And the Pecklids want the Enterprise tech, and they're destroying starships of all kinds and combining all the tech to make a super powerful ship. And they're still calling every starship in Starfleet the Enterprise. Yeah. They don't seem very smart. Somehow they're (laughs) kicking butt, though. Hello, Enterprise. Yeah. And they're super powerful. They were taking out these starships left and right. Yeah. We talked about Peanut Hamper, who is the exocomp that we saw in TNG. She visits this the Cerritos. Peanut Hamper is also a callback to a TNG episode from season six, episode nine, called The Quality of Life. Mm-hmm. And I saw in an interview that McMahon was excited to paint a Starfleet uniform on an exocomp. So he did it. Didn't somebody draw it on? Or is that considered paint? I guess it's just the color (laughs) animation. Turns out she's a real jerk and has a stupid name. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh-huh. You have to watch the episode to get that because someone thinks that. I mean, we think that. I went back and watched some of that The Quality of Life episode, Mm -hmm. and that's the one with the poker playing at the beginning when they're waging, shaving off their beard. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So it's worth watching it for that. And then the exocomp in there, it doesn't have the same lifelike qualities as we sound lower decks, but yeah, it's pretty similar. And, and I mean, it's, for 1989 or 1990 or whenever that was. Yeah. But go watch it. It's a good one. Of course, the big reveal is Captain Riker and the Titan. The Titan shows up with Captain Riker and he's voiced by Jonathan Frakes, mm-hmm. as we all know. And Deanna Troy is voiced by Marina Sirtis. People might not know that. I think there's a lot of people who listen to our show that have not gone back and watched all the Star Trek TNG. Uh-huh. And I think you'll still like Lower Decks. Oh, yeah. You just won't be able to catch some of these deeper mm-hmm. things. But if you listen to this show, now you can go back to the exact episodes and watch them. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to go back and watch the whole thing. Yeah, there weren't many old actors that came back to do Mm-mm. their voices. We saw Q, or we heard Q mm-hmm. doing Q's voice. And then our Riker and yeah, Deanna. Deanna, which is fun. Fun fact, the Titan has never been shown on screen, only talked about. In Nemesis, Riker and Troy transfer to the Titan. This happens after Data dies. Well, I guess we know he didn't really die. If you watch watch Picard. 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 (laughs) Also, Lower Decks takes place in 2380, and the transfer was in 2379. So Riker has only been captain for about a year, which is why he's still hot rodding it around the galaxy. Uh Uh-huh. He's like, pedal to the metal. He's like a totally different Riker. I love it. It's good. Uh-huh. Now that he doesn't have stodgy old Captain Picard holding him back, he can do his thing. Oh. Oh, pardon me, Captain. How are you today? <laughs> Earl Grey. Hot. And Riker really loves jazz, which I love. Ding. <laughs> I wonder if he likes snake jazz as well. Q clip.
That's a Rick and Morty reference. <laughs> a funny one too. <laughs> Riker and Mariner know each other already. Of course they do. It really helps connect the show though. It cracks me up when Mariner's like, Oh, Hey, Will." I mean, he's the captain. Uh-huh. <laughs> She's an ensign. And Boimler's like, you know, Captain Riker. Oh yeah. He's flush with the Romulan ale and the, and that's where she gets all her contraband. All her contraband. And he's like, Oh, oh, oh turn it off. And Deanna Troy's like, we are talking about this later. <laughs> it was super, super funny. One of my most favorite parts about this episode was the Next Generation theme song was playing while the Titans rescue the Cerritos. It was epic. Uh-huh. I don't understand how every episode couldn't be like this. To me, it could have been. There's uh-huh. so much material. Uh-huh. And you have to have a, what, a virus outbreak? A holodeck? episodes yeah a flashback episode i mean come on man yeah well i did see in an interview that mike mcmahon says that these last three episodes of the season i think they're getting more into the flow and you know the writing and everything Mm -hmm. and this is what we should expect out of season two but if you look back at the last two episodes before this they're the ones that we have at the top of our least favorite Exactly. exactly which i'm a little nervous about but based on this last episode, this episode just blew me away. We need TNG season three, Mike McMahon, not season four. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> or really five for that matter. But now there were also some very show changing events in this episode. Not to bring it down. Do, do, do. Shax sacrifices himself to save the Cerritos and to save Rutherford. Ooh. Yeah, Rutherford and Shax go and set a virus onto the Packled ship. And Badgie, holodeck creature, wrote the virus and explodes the ship right after Rutherford makes it off. And it's sad. Yeah. I can't believe they wrote Shax off. Mm -hmm. Shax has to rip off Rutherford's implant to keep the virus on the Packled ship. Mm -hmm. And this gives Rutherford his amnesia. Which is sad because he doesn't remember Tindy. He's hot for Tindy. Oh, yeah. It's so sweet, though. He's always like, look at her. She's so cute. Uh I do get the sense that Rutherford likes everybody, though. I think he's got the hots for his boss, too. Remember the episode? Where he wants to tell him something? Yeah, and then they go off together to live together in peace. That's the holodeck Mariners movie episode. I don't know if that's meant to be that, you know, Rutherford loves who he loves. Yeah, could be. Or if he just wants to nerd out forever. Yeah, yeah. It's unknown, but Rutherford is such a like a gentle soul. Uh huh. So fun to watch. He's in love with his engineering job on the Cerritos. Yeah. I mean, nothing really competes with that. Yeah. And then maybe the next level would be a person. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure, but <laughs> Rutherford, I think he's a pretty complicated character. So I wouldn't just assume. That he's going to end up with Tindy. Could be Ooh, someone new. You never I hope know. so. I like them. Me I too. ship them. Me too. So cute. Mariner and her mom, Captain Freeman, agree to work together and support each other. I think this is going to be fun. I really think Mariner needs to step it up. She needs a command post. Yeah. She needs, needs to be on the dang bridge, but then it's no longer lower decks. Speaking of the next bullet here, <laughs> Boimler gets promoted and transferred to the Titan, and Mariner is not happy about it at all. No, she's blown up his phone thing. Pad. But it just seems like he just left anyway, so it's probably his fault too for not acknowledging. And he was all like, "Oh, we can't get transferred. You know, I'll miss you." Yeah, you're my best friend. Yeah. Oh wait. The Titan. Yeah, that's like his dream job, though. Yeah. Can't really blame him too much. You have to take the dream job, even though if you're friends, you leave behind. 